Hi everyone, it's Vicky here with a new art journal layout. Today I'm showcasing a new collection. This is designed by Antonis Janidakis for Stamperia. It is called Sea World and it comes with stamps, paper, stencils, a bunch of uh, goodies. Let's take a look at some of them. This is the Lady, the Sea World Lady. It's a nice big stamp that would make a great focal point for an art journal. And it gives you lots of other uh, uh, smaller designs such as sea cells, starfishes, uh, some text, great designs for adding some texture, visual texture on your backgrounds. Remember that the real stamp is quite bigger than the one on the packaging, so you get really good focal points. This is the seaward piping, great for backgrounds, especially if you are into steampunk. And this is the octopus, and again you get big focal points. Now let's take a look at the paper collection, which is absolutely adorable. I will be using lots of elements from this one today. I just love the color combo, so this is a great background. You can use them on card making as well. I like to cut out elements from these pattern papers and make them my own, so this C lady would make a great focal point on an art journal. At the back you can cut out strips of paper to embellish your uh, layouts. Here is a steampunk octopus that you can cut out and use it on its own. Or you can use other elements from this page to embellish your uh, layout. Lovely, lovely. I absolutely love this one and you will see how I'm going to use these pattern papers today as I will cut out bits and pieces from many of those papers. Now here is another one with lots of tags that you can use. Notice that at the back the layout matches exactly the front. That means that you can fuzzy cut them and you have a piece that has a beautiful front and back. The color combination on this paper pad is uh, exactly right up my alley. I love the rusty browns with uh, the blues. And you can see this pattern paper that gives you four different uh, areas that you can cut out. Even the steampunk starfish can be used on its own as a focal point. And take a look at the back. Those colors are absolutely gorgeous. Now here is another one that has some blueprints on top. Great for backgrounds again. And here is another one where you can see four different areas. Again, you can cut out the steampunk submarine and use it on its own. Here are four squares and again it matches the background. So if you are into albums, you can use them as different pages. Where you have both front and back usable. Here is a steampunk jellyfish. I mean, how adorable is this paper pad? I absolutely love it. And uh, remember, it comes in 12 by 12 that I am showing you here. But there is also an 8 by 8 version as well. Here is a steampunk compass. And here is the back with some uh, piping in brown colors. Now, this is the seahorse. This is the main focal point for my layout today. I will be fuzzy cutting it and use it on my page. Another steampunk focal point for your pages with lovely backgrounds that you can use. Piping at the back and this time in uh, mainly white and I'm going to show you the other one which was mainly in brown. And finally here is a steampunk fish with lots of corals that you can cut out if you like. Now for today I will be working on my Dina Weekly blue journal and I'm looking for a two page spread since I will be creating something big. I'm working on the cotton pages. I'm going to start by applying some vintage photo and I'm going to cover up both pages. Now notice how my paint is soaked up completely by the paper and it is super difficult for me to spread it around. If you want to avoid that thing, make sure that you apply gesso beforehand. I was too lazy to do that. I will continue by adding more water on my brush. This is going to help spread out the paint easier. But if you are recreating this, make sure that you apply gesso beforehand. It's going to save you loads of paint. Now I'm going to apply uh, this um, vintage photo on both pages and I'm not being very neat. I don't care if I have some areas that are not completely covered up. This is just the first layer. Now, after looking at uh, the colors on the paper pad, and uh, since I'm going to fuzzy cut elements from this paper pad, I decided that those two colors that I will be using for my background would match perfectly with the elements. So I started with vintage photo, and now I'm going to move on and add um, peacock feathers on top of it. 
and you will see that at the end everything is going to match nicely. The cut-out elements, after I stick them down, are not going to stand out as if they are not part of the whole thing. You will see what I mean by the end of the project. Now I am adding some visual texture on my background by just stamping a text stamp that I had forever. For stamping I am using Archival Link and I am switching from Jet Black or Black Suit, whatever you have, to Ground Espresso, which is a really uh, dark brown. Now I'm going to bring in the Octopus Seaward stamp set and I'm going to use bits and pieces from this one just to stamp on my background. So you will see that I will get some interesting uh, visual effects that are going to add to the whole steampunk look. I like how they have a foam at the back so they can easily be manipulated and when I'm working on a mixed media project I'm not ever using my stamping block. I like to stamp things with my fingers so this way I don't get a perfect impression. The impression looks more organic and it matches beautifully the, uh, the whole thing. Now also remember that the paper that I'm working on here is quite uh, textured so it is difficult to get a perfect impression. If you are working on a paper that is completely smooth you could get the image as it is. Now I switch to the other stamp set, this is the Seaward Lady and uh, again I picked the smaller ones, not the big focal point with the lady and I'm using those two all over the background. Now I'm going to bring in the Seaward paper pad and I'm going to look through all the pages and decide what I want to use on my page. At this stage I know that I want the steampunk seahorse to be the focal point but as I am going through all of those uh, pages I decide what else I want to use for my page. So I'm using my big scissors to cut out some of those strips of paper that I can use to create a border on my page. I'm not using a paper trimmer, I don't care if something isn't cut out properly. You see I'm just using my big scissors to cut out that rusty edge so that I can use it on my page. And I keep on browsing through the pages, cutting out bits and pieces for my page. I am going to cut out some of those gears that I love so these are for example and I'm mainly staying away from the big focal points since I can use them on another page like the big anchor here or previously the steampunk uh, jellyfish. These are perfect for other pages. Then I'm going to switch to smaller scissors and then I'm going to fuzzy cut the um, seahorse and if you don't want to do that just keep in mind that there is a stamp set with a seahorse from this collection. It is the exact same seahorse but it is slightly smaller so you can stamp it and color it with your favorite mediums and use that as a focal point. Before sticking all the cutout elements on my page, I'm adding some white splashes. This is a detail that I always like to do. This is just white gesso diluted with water. And let me show you what I have cut out. You can see here all the bits and pieces. These are strips of paper that I will be working with to create a border. Here is my focal point, which is the lovely seahorse. I absolutely love this one. I have some gear, some bits and pieces that I can use and I, ca I even fuzzy cut the little anchor. And now it's time to stick everything down. For that I'm using matte medium with water and remember that my background is made out of uh, acrylic paint, distress paint, so that means that it is completely permanent and it's not going to move on me no matter what I use on top of it. I am creating a border with the strips of uh, papers that I have cut out and as I am sticking them down I am making them smaller and I don't stick uh, the same paper back to back to another one just uh, making sure that I switch in between colors and different textures this is going to give more interest on my frame and you can see here that on the frame I have also incorporated some pieces with text I think it gives a more interesting look and once I'm happy with the border, then I'm going to stick other elements like this piece of uh, rust that I have cut out. I'm also going to stick down the gears and finally the seahorse. Now I like to call my art journals quote journals. So I always like to have a motivational quote on my pages and that's why I always leave a blank space where I can add that there. 
So you can see that I have uh, some elements on one page leaving enough space and on uh, the other page I have my focal point which is in this case the seahorse. I'm sticking everything down, continue sticking everything down with my matte medium. You don't have to cover up anything, I'm just covering it up with my brush just to make sure that everything is nicely stuck there and it's not going to go anywhere. Once everything is down and completely dry, I'm going to bring in a brown big brush marker to add some shadows here and there. This is going to help uh, tremendously, it's going to make all those pieces looking more dimensional. They are going to stand out against the background. It is a technique that I like to go back again and again. It is the easiest way to add shadows or highlights. I'm just um, adding just a touch with my big brush marker and blending it out with my finger. This is Indian ink and it is going to dry permanent. And it works like that because I have added matte medium all over the place. It works only, this technique works only on non pore surfaces. If you don't have big brush markers, then you can work with uh, watercolor markers if you have. Just do the same thing that I'm doing here and then uh, instead of blending them out with your finger, you can blend them out with a wet brush. You will get similar results. Now I used a thin black marker and went around some of the details. This also uh, helps all those cutouts to stand out against the background. And finally I'm using my white gel pen, which is a detail that I always add on my pages, to add highlights here and there on all the cutouts. Shadows and highlights on uh, cutout pieces that you collage on your art journal are a must. They really bring them to life, they separate them for the, from the background and uh, they give that three-dimensional look. For this layout I'm going with a quote that says Seize the day and I'm going to stamp that with uh, Foam Alphabet by Tim Holtz. It is super difficult to stamp letter by letter in a line and have something completely neat. So from the beginning, make sure that you don't try to do that. Otherwise, it's going to look wonky. That's why I'm not going to stamp everything on a straight line. I'm deliberately stamping up and down the letters as if I wanted that look from the beginning. Trust me, you will not be able to be super neat. One is going to be slightly wonky if you try to do it on a straight line. And plus, nothing is super neat on this page, so this looks better and blends nicely with the rest of the theme. By the way, I used black archival ink to stamp my quote and now I'm using my white gel pen to add some highlights, which is going to help the quote stand out against the background. As a final detail, I'm going to use Glamour Paste. This is a product by Stamperia and I zoomed in for you, so probably you can see how shiny it is. It is a paste that you can apply with your spatula or over a stencil and I'm going to add some details on my page. Now the color that I'm using here is called Ancient Pink and although it says pink, trust me, it looks more like rust and it matches perfectly the colors on my page. I'm using a stencil that I don't even know where it's from. It is super old and I just found it on my stash. I'm applying it uh, here and there on my page. I'm going to let it dry and this is going to add just a touch of shine on my page. Creating my own backgrounds and then sticking on top different elements that uh, have a uh, fuzzy cut from pattern papers or for stamped images are my way to go. I always end up with a motivational quote on my pages and I had so much fun while creating this layout. Here are some close-ups on different areas of my page. And this is where you can see how the background colors that I used match perfectly the colors of the cutout pieces, so everything comes together nicely. Here are some close-up photos on uh, the project that I made for today while showcasing the new Sea World collection designed by Andonis Janidakis for Stamperia. Check out the collection, I'm sure you will find a wonderful products that you will love. I hope that you had fun watching and that you got inspired. And until next time, stay safe and keep on crafting. Thank you all for watching.